Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about something I call continuous motion effects. Okay, I get this one every now and again. It's usually from someone who used Final Cut Pro 7 where they were able to add keyframes beyond the extent of the clips and you can do that in Premiere Pro. The big part is recognizing what isn't a continuous motion effect. So right now I've got a timeline with some cuts and transitions and see if you can spot what is not continuous motion. So let's have a look at this. I'm zooming in and there's a transition. And you can see it's it's definitely subtle, but when it goes to the next clip, the next clip is not starting, hasn't started moving yet. It's still static and then it starts moving. And that's caused by the transition going to the next clip and then the motion starting. So if we look at one of these clips and then go to the effects controls, I'm going to show you a little uh, filter down here. If you click on here and show only keyframed properties, it'll turn everything else off and just get dig right into the keyframe properties. So if we take these transitions out, you can see at the beginning of this clip, because it's a very large image, it's 28.6 and at the end it's uh, 32.6. So the the keyframes for scale are at the exact limit of the clips, so it can't move beyond that clip. Um, and it that's hidden a little bit by by transitions on there. So when you look at the clip, the transition's hiding really where the beginning of that, that clip is. So I'm gonna remove these transitions. I'm just gonna use a, uh, if you haven't seen Excalibur, whoo, I'll put a link. I use Excalibur all the time. Just got rid of those uh, transitions. So let's start with the first one here. And in, in the effects controls, there's a little flyout menu. And this is set to default, pin to clip. And when I click on it, you'll notice that the zoom changed. So the, the value between here, the duration of that and the clip are pinned, they're locked. But when you turn that off, you can now go beyond that. So we can zoom in and zoom out beyond the edge of the clip. Now you can't go further than the beginning one because it's at the beginning of the sequence, but this is the end of that and I could put the motion past the edge of the clip. If you look, there's a little gray line in here and it continues to move after that. But your first thought is, well, if you can't see the clip, why move that? You can see the edge of that clip when you stick a transition because a transition is the opacity in a dissolve like this. It's the opacity of both of those layers at one time. So at one time, they're both showing and one tails off. So if we go to the next one, and again, there that's where we see it. Now we can get to the left side and the right side. And we drag these off a little bit. And I could move it based on, on frames to make it more accurate. Um, and now when I put transitions in here, watch what happens. Let's go back to here. Oh. Let me make sure I'm putting it in far enough. There, you can see the motion, the two girls standing there at the beginning of, of the uh, dissolve, they're already moving. It's a continuous motion between them. Let me do this to all of them and then I'll AB them both so you can see it. Okay, so now I've done it to each one of these. So let's look at continuous motion on its own first. 
So you can see, very, very fluid. It's moving before it even begins. Very nice. And again, let's go to the default motion and look at that. Pretty obvious to see. So let's look at a comparison of both of them together. So there you go, very simple. It's, it's great for any effect that changes over time, not just scale, um, any other kinds of interactive effects where you never want the motion to end. It's, it's pretty easy. And if you want, you could select one of those clips with the keyframes the way they are, extending a little bit beyond and right click and save it as a preset and call it continuous motion and drag that on. So I think this is pretty useful. Again, I get this comment every now and again from people who are used to different ways of doing it. Now you know that little pin to clip, turn it off, move the keyframes out, pass the transition, and it's gonna look great. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. If you do, it means a lot to us. If you want to support us some more, like our many wonderful donors, thank you very much. You can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop where you can donate once or monthly any amount. We appreciate it so much. There's a member section, lots of free stuff, and uh, some tickers and some split screens for you to grab. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to the comments and then turn that into a tutorial, tutorial that you would find useful.